guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Volvo S60, courtesy of Younger Volvo in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am in this one today because this is an incredibly good looking sedan from sweden a couple big changes for the 2022 model year as well also you get the four year 50 000 mile bumper to bumper warranty which definitely beats the traditional three year 36 000 mile warranty that you usually find in other manufacturers but so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will actually be three different trim levels for the 2022 volvo s60 momentum front wheel drive for $39,250 inscription front wheel drive for $42,250 and then the r design front wheel drive starting at $42,250 but that was all pricing as you could tell for the front wheel drive configuration you can add all wheel drive to any of those configurations just simply add $2,300 to any of those prices then but when it comes to the power plant of the 2022 Volvo X60. This is really the main change for this particular model year because the T5 and T6 engines are gone for 2022 and replaced with simply one power plant being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 247 horsepower at 5,400 RPM, 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM. And by the way, this particular engine configuration does actually include a 48 volt mile hybrid battery system as well for a little bit of extra power there too but anyways power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.2 seconds for the all-wheel drive 6.4 seconds then for the front wheel drive the mpg numbers coming in at 26 in the city 35 on the highway for the front wheel drive 25 city 33 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test or anything like that here in our s60 i do want to mention the drive modes and so the drive modes are actually all located with in the center infotainment screen and we'll get more into that in a little bit here but they will include dynamic comfort and individual essentially adjusting quite a bit to be quite honest including throttle response shift points steering sensitivity suspension settings climate control settings all-wheel drive system engagement and actually the braking as well that is a ton of different adjustments that you could do most other manufacturers won't allow those kind of adjustments so usually it's just throttle response steering sensitivity and shift points so that is quite impressive to be quite honest but having now got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here let's put the acceleration to the test here first and let's see if the s60 really does feel like zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds all right so i did put it in that dynamic driving mode and here we go there wasn't much turbo lag like at all that's good <laughs> This thing's plenty quick. You're not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway, kind of as I just did. It just got it up to 60 miles per hour. But yeah, that'll definitely do the trick when it comes to getting on to merging onto the highway or anything like that. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.8 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 11.9 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at a very impressive 114 feet. And so real quick, let's do the braking feel. It's actually a little bit on the softer side. I kind of expected a little bit firmer of a braking feel, but having said that, that 114 foot number, that's plenty good. That's sports sedan good right there. Typically sedans, you're gonna find lower 120s, if not upper 120s. So 60 to zero in 114 feet is definitely plenty respectable. As far as suspension and handling goes, up front you will find a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, integral link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's 100% soaking up road imperfections. I just hit a little bit of a bump right there. Barely even felt it. So ride quality is definitely dang good. As far as steering feel, goes i would say tends to lead a little bit on the looser side wouldn't have minded a bit heavier of a feel especially with me being in dynamic driving mode right now i would expect a little bit heavier of a weight to the steering but it's a little bit on the softer side but it's not bad and as far as cabin noise goes i am going 54 miles per hour right now there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin so that is definitely on point as well as far as visibility 
stability goes, I could see perfectly fine out the back. And actually, let me adjust my rear view mirror a little bit. But yeah, 100% on point because of the shape of this sedan. You're definitely not going to have any issues there. And you will find a head-up display that I'm currently looking at coming with the advanced package that goes for $2,250. But that is currently projecting my speed as well as the speed limit and some safety features of any given road that you are on. So I am definitely appreciative of that as well. But... That about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Volvo S60. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Volvo S60 finished in thunder gray metallic. I love this exterior color, but let's go ahead and start up front on this one here. Gloss black, black style front grille for the momentum and R design trim levels. Then you're actually going to get vertical chrome bars on that front grille if you were to go with the inscription trim level with some chrome accents on the lower portion of that front bumper again if you go with the inscription trim level only. And because I haven't mentioned it yet we actually do have the momentum trim level in case anybody was curious about that same front fascia or style between the momentum and the r design as far as the front end goes slight differences with the grill but that's really about it led fog lights coming with the inscription and r design and they actually do come with the cornering function as well so they're going to bend a little bit when you're going around those bends on the back road so that's definitely a safety feature in itself to be quite honest and it is available on the momentum as an option with the uh, advanced package i believe and that's that's why we actually have it here today. So they definitely look good down there. As far as the headlights go, I think this is probably what Volvo is known best for these days. Thor's Hammer LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. And it's the LED daytime running lights that's in the shape of that Thor's Hammer. I definitely love the design of that, but automatic feature of course does come standard with that. And actually automatic high beams coming standard for all trim levels across the board as well, which you can't say for all manufacturers out there. So definitely a big fan of that. But that about rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the S60. All right, and so now since we are around to the side of this thing, chrome window surrounds for the inscription black window surrounds for the momentum and R design trim levels taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored side mirrors for the inscription trim level only actually because otherwise you're going to get what we have today which are gloss black side mirrors for the momentum and the R design trim levels power adjustable of course they will actually be heated as well with LED integrated turn signals for all trim levels across the board then take a look down at the wheel configuration 18 inch double five spoke diamond cut alloys for the momentum 18 inch multi-spoke alloys for the inscription and 18 inch double five spoke unique alloys for the R design trim but pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the s60 all right so now since we are around to the back of this one body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top of course volvo lettering spell out horizontally on that rear trunk there led taillights coming standard across the board and i love the c-shaped design to them definitely looks good as far as the badging goes to the right there the b5 indicating that this is the gasoline version essentially there is a electric version as well and then of course you have the all-wheel drive badging if the s60 that you're looking at is equipped just below it all you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips and such a cool looking design to those chrome tips as well but anyways they will be of course integrated into the rear bumper which i absolutely love a lot of manufacturers don't do that so i like the added touch there by volvo but as always i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back of the S60, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there of course are a few different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob. And by the way, the orange key fob indicates that this is key fob number two. The original key fob number one is going to be black. So that's why we have this cool orange one today. But anyways, button on the key fob. Of course, you can use the button on the trunk itself. And there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. And there is actually a hands-free smart trunk that is available as an option. We actually do have that today. You just simply kick your foot underneath and it is going to open up automatically for you there. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 11.6 cubic feet. If that was not an 
enough space. Those rear seats, of course, do fold down, bumping that up quite substantially then. Did want to mention though, in the cargo area, you have two cargo lights. You usually always find one cargo light with basically every other car out there. So I thought that was pretty cool. You actually also have two grocery bag hooks, which are very rare in sedans. You typically find them on SUVs, but again, not always, usually not the case in sedans. So that was pretty cool as well. And if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire under there then as well. But then making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 35.2 inches. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in those rear seats there. Rear center armrest with cup holders coming with the inscription and our design trims. There is rear ventilation coming standard. Rear charging ports, there are two of them. They are just your traditional phone charging ports, not USB or anything anything like that, but they are there for you if you wanted them. You do have a tiny little bit of storage just in front of the rear passengers there, and I mean like a tiny bit, maybe to fit like the size of a key fob or something. And heated rear seats are actually optional. I absolutely love that. It doesn't come standard, but it is available, which is pretty darn sweet. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Power adjustable front seats coming for all trim levels across the board. Two-way power lumbar for the momentum four-way power lumbar for the inscription and our design and let me tell you that made the seats so much more comfortable so i love the way they did the power lumbar in the s60 there are power cushion extensions for the inscription and our design trims passenger side memory settings that's something you never see on the inscription and our design so typically you find it on the driver's side and we do have it for up to two different drivers but for the passenger side as well, that's pretty cool. I like that. Anyways, leather seating coming with the inscription, Napa leather coming with the R design, of course, leather seating optional on the momentum. Heated and ventilated seats, of course, are available as well. As far as seat comfort goes, because of that power lumbar, like I was saying, seats are incredibly comfortable. So definitely no issues whatsoever when it comes to seat comfort. Taking a look at the steering wheel, this tilt and telescoping, it is manually adjustable. It is leather wrapped for the inscription and our design. And again, optional once again on the momentum. I feel like we have every option in the world on our momentum trim that we have today. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Volvo logo on the one side, all of your buttons located on the side of the key being lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear hatch. And again, the key is orange because we have key fob number two. Key fob number one is going to be black. But anyways, it is a keyless entry with a turn knob start. A little bit different than other manufacturers, but pretty normal for Volvo. But simply what you do there is just put your foot on the brake and turn that knob to the right. And when you go to turn off the vehicle, you're once again going to turn it to the right. So it's turn right on, turn right off pretty easy. Then take a look at the gauges. One of my favorite parts, a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster coming standard across the board. Speedometer is all the way on your left. There is a small digital speedometer within that analog speedometer. Pretty cool. Tachometer is on your right. And you will find a bunch of different information then front and center. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side. And the gauges do change up slightly depending upon the driving mode. For example, if you put it in that eco driving mode, it's going to change up the tachometer a little bit. But other than that, I wouldn't mind it if uh, Volvo put a little more customization to those digital gauges because the possibilities are really endless when you go digital. So they could change up the colors maybe for dynamic driving mode or whatever. Gauges though are still extremely nice on this thing. But now making our way to overall interior quality, there is a dual pane panoramic moonroof that comes standard. Gotta love that. Dual zone climate control coming with the momentum. Four zone climate control with the inscription and our design. Crystal gear selector coming with the inscription. Now, we don't have that today, but I'm gonna put it on the screen here because that is a cool looking gear selector. And it's actually made by a Swedish company as well. I can't pronounce it, but that is pretty cool. It's Swedish crystal, but it's always nice to have a little Swedish crystal in your car at any time. That's what I always say, at least. Our design trim, though, is also going to add a charcoal headliner, metal mesh, aluminum decor, and sport pedals, aka aluminum pedals, as well. And that is pretty cool. Wireless phone charger coming with the inscription and our design. It is available for the momentum and we actually do have it just to the right of the shifter there and it is a rubber bottom so your phone doesn't slide around so i'm definitely a big fan of that and just in front of that wireless phone charger you do have a 12 volt power outlet there's plenty of wood grain accents found just above the passenger side glove box as well as just in front of the shifter everything i'm talking everything is soft touch material i almost never find 
everything like it is in the Volvo, a soft touch material. They really paid attention to detail in this thing. There is an electromechanical parking brake just behind the uh, turn button start there. You have dual cup holders and within the center armrest, you actually have a two USB charging ports. That's pretty cool. So if you wanted a USB charging port, you have two of them. So that's pretty nice. But overall, I love the contrast colors we have on our exterior here. And I definitely love the attention to detail with all the soft touch material and the minimalist buttons. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons in total front and center, which leads us to the infotainment portion of this review. Nine inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard for every trim level. Bluetooth and audio streaming also standard, of course. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, just hook it up to the S60 and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on the infotainment screen. Climb control settings found at the bottom portion of that. That's pretty cool. You can adjust your heated seat settings found at the bottom portion just to the right and the left of those climate control settings there. And pretty much you can adjust every everything through that. Like I was saying earlier, you can check out the drive modes through that. There's also weather information. Really the list goes on. And of course your radio information as well, which leads me into the speaker setup on the S60. There's a couple of them. 10 speaker sound system coming with the Momentum and R design that comes with 220 watts. Then you got a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system coming with the inscription that's 600 watts and that is optional as well on the other trims. And we actually do have that Harman Kardon sound system. And then you have my very favorite of any of the vehicles I have ever reviewed in history, being a 15 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system that goes for $3,200 and comes with 1100 watts. It's my favorite because the clarity is unheard of. The clarity on that and the bass, everything is perfect. But anyways, we do have the Harman Kardon 14 speaker sound system here today with 600 watts. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Clarity is definitely there 100%. I can tell you that. Bass is plenty fine as well. Again, not as good as the Bowers and Wilkins, I'm telling you guys, but that was a great sound system, if I'm being honest. So definitely no issues with that. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the S60 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you go with the advanced package that we have today for $2,100, you will also find a 360 degree surround view camera. That's the 360 degree view button, obviously, but that's gonna give you that bird's eye view of everything all around you. And one of the clearest rear view cameras I've seen in quite a while as well, which is pretty nice. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert with auto brake as well. Collision avoidance assist with pedestrian, cyclist, and large animal detection. You usually don't get that in other manufacturers. So if you see a deer or a moose or an alien in the road, it's going to automatically stop for you. And that's pretty darn cool. Lane departure warning, lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, and there is runoff road mitigation as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, Volvo, of course, known for wonderful safety, did not let me down here in the S60. IAHS Top Safety Pick Plus pretty much says it all right there. Excellent design, not just on the exterior, but the interior as well. Everything is finished in very high quality materials, including these very nice speaker, metal speaker covers we have for Harman Kardon as well. Digital gauges are absolutely wonderful. So many luxury manufacturers are still using analog gauges today. So I love to see the digital gauges. I think the only constructive criticism I can think of probably is maybe add some ambient lighting. It's not really a huge deal, but that would definitely take this thing to the next level. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the S60 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.